So, linear transformation. So, in this topic, ang gagawin natin, uh, kapag ka nakagawa tayo ng linear model, ng model dun sa bivariate data set natin, tapos yung model natin eh hindi linear, let's say it's parabolic or logarithmic, meron pang paraan para maging straight yung relationship ng uh, dalawang quantitative data. Tinatawag natin yung linear transformation. So by definition, yung linear transformation is changing variable using mathematical operation to achieve linearity. At meron tayong dalawang types ng linear transformation. Yung isa, linear. Yung isa, non-linear. Ang tinatawag na linear transformation, yun yung pagka uh, ginamitan natin ng mathematical operation, yung either independent or yung dependent variable natin, walang effect yun sa correlation R natin. Yung R value natin will stay the same. However, pagka gumamit tayo ng non-linear transformation, yung correlation coefficient natin, which is yung R, magkakaroon siya ng pagtaas o pagbaba depende dun sa operation na ginamit natin. At ano naman yung mga halimbawa ng mga operations na pwede natin gamitin para magkaroon ng non-linear um, transformation? Pwede tayong gumamit ng exponent or pwede rin nating uh, i-take yung square root or yung uh, nth root ng EV or ng RV or yung explanatory variable or yung response variable para mag-achieve yung linearity natin. However, Kung ma-achieve man natin yung linearity natin, yung correlation R naman, magkakaroon ng uh, pagbabago din. So, yun yung dalawang um, uri ng transformation o linear transformation sa bivariate data relationship. Ngayon, maraming uh, uh, iba't ibang paraan kung paano natin um, baguhin yung relationship ng uh, bivariate data natin. Uh, kung hindi siya linear. Pwede natin siyang gamitin ng, well, yung standard linear regression natin is yung y equals a plus bx. At pag gamitan natin siya ng model, pwede natin gamitin siya ng exponential model, quadratic model, reciprocal model, logarithmic model, or power model. So ito yung mangyayari dun sa, um, independ sa dependent variable natin at saka sa independent variable natin. Pag in-apply natin yung mga transformation na yan. So, ano bang meron dito sa linear transformation? So, pagka natutunan nyo na yung linear transformation, pwede na natin i-explain kung anong ibig bang sabihin talaga nung transforming uh, variables o yung pagpapalit uh, natin o pag-change natin dun sa independent variable natin or dun sa dependent variable natin para ma-achieve yung linearity. We can also discuss the advantages of transforming data set and also, syempre, kailangan matuto din tayo kung paano nga natin mapapas straight yung uh, curved or uh, parabolic curve dun sa ating scatter plot. So, uh, yun yung mga gagawin natin dito sa uh, linear transformation. So, for example, meron tayo dito yung data set. So, yung data set natin eh, tungkol sa bacterial growth versus um, yung bacterial growth present every hour. So, yung... Uh, Dito, given na yung uh, number of hours will be our independent variable or explanatory variable. At yung bacterial growth naman, yun naman yung ating response variable or yung uh, dependent variable. Na kung gagamitin natin technology or ng calculator, we know na magkakaroon tayo ng model na may y-intercept na negative 4.2744 at may slope na 3.9433 hours. So ito yung model natin based dun sa data set. Ang tanong naman ngayon is, since mayroon na tayong model, ilang bacteria daw yung present after 3.75 hours? So, pag ginamit natin yung model, plug in natin yung value ng uh, 3.75 hours dun sa model, makikita natin na yung predicted Y, or yung Y hat, is equal to 2.024 million bacteria. So, at 3.75 hours, kulang-kulang 2.024 million bacteria daw yung present based dun sa model natin. Pero, Bago tayo mag-conclude na ito nga yung uh, uh, number of bacteria present after 3.75 hours, tingnan muna natin yung data set natin kung medyo tugma ba or medyo off. So, kung makikita nyo, between 3.5 hours and 4.0 hours, yung number of bacterial growth dun sa given data set natin, eh, magte-10 million na. So, from 3.5 hours, eh, 8 million na hanggang sa maging 10.6 million hours 
at 4.0. So, medyo off. Well, hindi lang medyo. Talagang off yung 2.024 million bacteria. Because ito, totoo to kung, let's say, one point, uh, between 1.0 or 1.5 hours yung uh, um, tinitingnan natin number of bacteria. Now, pag-aralan naman natin yung um, graph niya. So, ito yung... Uh, Ito yung uh, data set natin, yung hours yung uh, independent at yung bacteria count will be our dependent. So, pag ginawa natin siya ng scatter plot, hours will be our independent or explanatory variable. So, dito siya sa x-axis. At yung bacterial growth will be our response variable. So, y-axis. So, makikita nyo na logarithmic yung uh, behavior ng scatter plot. So, kung hindi kayo sure kung uh, linear siya or curved siya, tingnan natin yung uh, line of best fit. At so, from least square line, makikita natin na uh, curved nga siya. Tapos, mas mapapaigting pa yung conclusion natin na um, hindi nga siya linear pagka nakita nyo na yung residual plot. So, yung residual plot natin, makikita nyo, eh, payu yung shape. So, uh, alam natin na sa res residual plot, pagka yung residual plot natin merong uh, shape or formation, alam natin na hindi best fit yon or uh, hindi accurate yung magiging prediction niya kapag ginamit natin yung model. So, totoo nga na hindi best fit yung uh, model natin since yung residual plot natin e eh, U-shaped or parabolic may formation. So, uh, makukonclude natin na based dun sa graphical display e eh, hindi natin matatrust o pagkakatiwalaan yung model natin para magbilang ng bacteria na present given these hours. So, again, Kaya natin na-conclude na hindi nga siya accurate predictor or is hindi siya best fit is because one, yung scatter plot natin is non-linear. And the second one, yung residual plot natin is U-shaped or meron siyang pattern. So therefore, our model is not the best fit for, or not best fit as our predictor. So paano naman natin siya mapapas maiiba or ma-change para maging straight yung line yan? So magkakaroon tayo ng mga operations na gagamitin para... Gracias.